Hello there and welcome to our macroeconomics presentation. Today we are going to introduce you to a concept that only a few of you have heard of, the influence of PIGU on macroeconomics. We chose this topic because it is a macroeconomic theory that deals with the themes that we have studied in class. Now let us talk a bit more about Arthur Pigou. Born in 1877 and died in 1959, Arthur Pigou was an English economist. In the 1920s and 1930s, Arthur Pigou was considered as the master of Cambridge, where he also studied. He then became one of the defenders of classical economic thesis, for instance, Pigou's best work was The Economic of Welfare in 1920, in which he introduced the concept of externality and the idea that externality problems could be corrected by the imposition of a Pigouvian tax. Pigou was very critical of Keynesian macroeconomics and developed the idea of the Pigou effect on real money balances to argue that the economy would be more self-stabilizing than Keynes proposed. Keynes, in turn, was very critical of Pigou, mentioning him at least 17 times in the general theory of employment, interest and money. Now, let's get deeper into the two important concepts that affect macroeconomics, the Pigouvian tax and the Pigou effect. The Pigouvian tax is a tax put in place whenever market activities generate negative externalities. Negative externalities are costs that are not internalized in the market price of a product that a company sells. For instance, an environmental pollution is considered to be a negative externality as it affects third parties. In order to find a solution to those negative externalities, the Pigovian tax is said equal to the social cost of the negative externality of any inefficient market outcomes. Inefficient market outcomes lead to the overconsumption of the product that is sold. If we take a look at this graph illustrating the effects of the Pigouvian tax on outputs, we see that the implementation of the tax will raise the marginal private cost and will therefore move the equilibrium point to a new output quantity. So, let's start. We will now be talking about the Pigou effect in a more theoretical way. Check it out! The Pigou effect can rarely be applied in the real world. A reason for this is that if a fall in prices is sufficiently steep, many firms will end up taking down banks with them as they go bankrupt. However, if the fall in prices is gradual, there will be an uncertainty as to where it will end and, as a consequence, producers and consumers will hold on to their cash, therefore creating a liquidity trap. What is the Pigou effect? The Pigou effect is an economic term which refers to the relationship between consumption and wealth as well as employment and output during a period of deflation. In this situation, we would define wealth as the money supply divided by the current price level. As such, the Pigou effect states that when deflation occurs in relation to prices, employment and thus output will grow due to an increase in wealth and thus consumption. On the other side, with an inflation of prices and employment, output will go down due to a decreasing consumption, also known as the real balance effect. Arthur Pigou, originator of this effect, argued against Keynesian economic theory by stating the following, periods of deflation due to a drop in aggregate demand would be more self-correcting. As such, Deflation would be the source of an increase in wealth, causing expenditures to rise and therefore correcting the drop in demand. The Pigou effect states that large fall in prices would stimulate an economy and create a wealth effect that will generate full employment. The wealth effect is a change in spending that accompanies a change in perceived wealth. People spend more when they're actually richer or when they perceive themselves to be richer. Assuming that prices are flexible in the economy, if prices go down, more money becomes available to consumers for spending, which causes the economy to grow. As interest rates are lowered, consumers will demand more money for consumption. Therefore, the LM curve will shift to the right. An increase in money supply will result in an increase in spending, consumption, where purchases create demand for more production and hence more jobs. The IS curve will shift to the right, therefore increasing the national income. When prices go down, the LM curve shifts to the right. 
However, when consumption goes up, the IS curve shifts to the right as well, which will bring the interest rate to its initial level. And now, let's talk about the criticism. The Pico effect has been many times criticized by economists. In general, we would like you to remember that Pico's mechanism does not work in practice. The reality is that prices rarely fall, and when they do, stagnation in consumer expenditure while prices are falling is very common, as we have seen in Japan. The Pigo effect, as we have seen, says that falling prices would make consumers feel richer and therefore increase spending. Consumers reported in Japan that they prefer to delay purchases, expecting the prices to fall. Thank you for watching. We hope that you have learned a lot on Pigu and his work, and we wish you a farewell on your macroeconomics journey.